the coil. I mean, one of the things I wanted to show you about the coil. And let's go take a walk. Okay, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I cleaned up the coil and I lubricated it. And let's set let's set us up here on the table. And this is one of the tests that I like to do with the ohmmeter. So let's turn the ohmmeter on. And give me a second. You're going to be in my way, or I'm going to be in your way a little. And I want to see if you can see the ohmmeter. So let's say you can. So here's, we go to the primary, that's where the plug is, and you're not going to see that. I want you to watch this. And then I've cleaned up the coil so you can see I got bare steel of where it grounds. And watch it. You see it going all over the place? Now a good coil won't do that. So I think this coil is dead. And then I go to, I go to here. Alright, and watch. We're in the mega ohm range. And then I go to here. Okay, she's all over the place. So I think this coil's dead. We're going to find another one. Now we could mount it and check it, but let's find another one. And let's see what that one does. Alright, now here's one that I believe is good. I know it's nasty. We're going to have to clean it up. But let me set it up. We're going to connect it. Again, the clamp, the negative, well, it just doesn't matter, but in this case we'll use the negative. We're going to clamp that in to the primary where the plug goes, that's the primary of the coil. Get a, a clampage. And we're going to try and grab the in, a ground somewhere. See? Stable. Okay, 5.83, and that's where I like it. And now let's go to here. Okay, so I'm going in where it's clean. See? And then I'm going to go to here. Same, almost the same reason. It should be just a little bit different you know very often but it's not it's actually damn almost the same so that's perfect so this other coil is dead alright so hold on let me back you out so and I cleaned that this one needs to be cleaned up now now this is the one that's all over the place so that's probably one of the reasons why it, it these are not as nice by the way the uh... generally most Briggs motors the coils are bigger alright so I want to see if I can use a bigger coil here um, let me show you one that might be a little bit more useful. Let's see if I happen to have one handy. Uh, most of them are like this. Okay. And you can use one of these. Now, oh, is that a, what is that? That just, is that a roach? It could be. Uh, you never know because, by the way, I had, a, I had one that had roaches in it. I had a, a machine. That's why I like to clean them before I bring them in. Uh, and because the Latinos, they, they where they live, unfortunately, and it's not that because they're Latino, it's because where they live. So this one here, which is almost identical in most ways, and there really is no difference. Okay. So if you wanted to, all right, you could use this coil. And and this was it say. It's a 5K overhead valve Briggs. So, there's nothing wrong with it. Right? And it's ready to go in. So, we could, uh, we could just stick this in there. Because they're just made a little bit better. The, these are just happen to be a little bit better. It's just out of one of the, those motors, a 5K overhead valve. But it doesn't matter. It's the same. So, let's stick it in. That's what she said. That's what he said. And uh, let's get this thing fired up. We'll check it. Alright, so, like I said, I put a bigger coil on it, alright, and the coil that I showed you. Now, let's just see, I use, now, you know, by the way, guys, I like to use a little clip, alright, for the grounding electrode. It's just easier for me, so I'm going to try and hold with one hand and spin it, and let's see if we see it. Oh, boy, plenty of spark right there, alright. So, let me put my tools away. So like I said, you can use a different coil, and it's still a Briggs coil, I'm using a coil from an overhead valve engine, or whatever, which is uh, a different motor. Um, so this motor is a flathead, and it's a little different motor than this one, only because this one is a little newer, but if we look outside, uh, do I have an overhead valve? Well, that's a flathead. 
Here, I got one over here. Uh, by the way, the husky that's back there, can you see it? That orange one? That's an overhead valve. That's a newer type, which is also a little different than this guy, and it's raining, so I don't want to stay out here. See that guy there? All right, that's uh, that's a different Troy built as well, and that's still a Briggs, but it's got an overhead valve. And that's a bigger overhead valve engine, but that's a little newer version of it. So, but notice the coils. Really, this one on the Troy build, this one here, they just cheaped out. They put a, a, a lighter duty coil on it. All right, I'll be back in a bit. Let me keep going. Okay, quick. I did a quick clean up on it. Look at how nice it is. All right, it's nice and clean. Like I said, it's a laminate, so it's got to have something. Now, hopefully, you can see that. Um, so primary which is with the plug part and of course I clean the steel part where it mounts to the body and you can see 3.125 K they go about five six when they get about above about five they start to get crappy but when they start wandering and they're all over the place they're bad and also you want to go to the ground lug right 3.122 it should be very close a little off or identical. There is nothing wrong with that coil. In fact, it's actually very low. It's a very good impedance. So, oh, there's my dog out there. Anyway, so this is good. Let's put this on and let's get it uh, set up. All right, just loosen up the magneto enough so that it's you can move up against the magnets easy without any effort. All right, and then we'll put a feeler gauge on it. We'll run this around, see how it pulls right in. That's what I want. Okay, and then we can tighten it. And then we can check the spark when we're doing the compression test phase. Right, get it nice and tight. And I always use quarter inch drive because you don't want to overdo it. And that's why I lubricate the coils because they're laminates. You want to make sure that they're compressing well. And I lubricate the screws too. So I want to make sure I'm not stripping anything, I'm having additional friction because I'm feeling it. That's fine. All right, let's get my. Feel the gauge back. Alright, we'll go find a plug. Sorry for the noise, the air compressor's on. Let me just lean over here, and I'm just going to wire. You can't see it because I get the camera facing this way, and there's the band here. They're using a band brake. So let's, let's just clean the magneto, uh, the magnets for the magneto first. I just use my two strong coil with the uh, training fluid and stuff in it and everything and I just give it a wipe because that's all you really need to do to get off the yuck and that leaves a little bit of an oil on it. You can see all the junk you get off of it because uh, you don't want that, you know, getting between the coil. Alright, now get these wiped off. In fact, just use this and just make a few passes over it. You want to make sure you're getting a good contact, all right? That's what you care about. Now the coils, this side out, a lot of times they say that, cylinder side. And a lot of times they'll say that, so be mindful of that. And just because you took it off and it went a particular direction doesn't mean it's the right direction. All right? Now again, I'm going to put a little bit of light lube on it, and in this case, again, I'm going to use... I'm sorry I move so fast, but I, you know, when I'm doing this stuff, I, I tend to. Again, I'm going to be using the two-stroke mix that I have, uh, because it's got light oils in it, especially the tranny fluid. Which, tranny fluid is great because it has a... same thing with this, the other, the other one. Uh, and again, it's, I do that because it has the light lube. The training fluid is got detergents in it, so it works really good. Just 
hand tighten them. This way that sucks into the magnets. All right. Now it's a little harder on this machine because there's not a lot of room. The flywheel is so much smaller. But I take my 10,000s brass gauge and I just kind of drop it in there, and then I rotate. I rotate the magnets around and let them suck in. Hear it? That's it. See that sucks in. It's nice, it goes right through. And then we'll take the wrench. Wherever I put it. You guys see what I did with it? It's getting late, so here it is. And just cinch it down. By hand. And choke up on it. On I use quarter drive because you do not want to snap this. Remember, it's let it relax a little bit. It's why I lubricate it because it is. These are laminate steel, so they have to crush together again. And that's why I blow them out, clean them off real good, and lubricate them. It allows me to get this nice and tight, so it, it's not going to lose up. It loosen up. So just to review. Now let's take the. Get my 10,000s dealer gauge back, and I guarantee you that will spark. And we're done. So now, why do I always do the coils? Well, first of all, I don't want to put it all back together. And some of the machines are more involved when you put them together. So you want to put it all together and go, oh, no spark. That's the first reason. Second reason is you wouldn't want to replace a coil with a new one, right? And then not clean the plug and not service the plug. And so it doesn't make sense to service the plug and not clean or inspect or replace the coil and adjust it because they work together and that's your ignition system and there's electronics in here so you want to make sure that they're working together because a lot of times the hard starts or the poor running is not fuel it's not carburetor a lot of times it's right here in your simple ignition system and it's just worth doing all right so we'll be back in a bit and uh, we'll take it to the next step okay so I got I took the module off. I got you know, the gook in there and everything. So, got the gook out. And I'm going to do now is this: we're going to put my ten thousandths in here. I'll show you what's going on. We'll roll the magneto in. Pull it in. See? I got it pulled in. All right. Now I'm going to tighten it. Okay. Tighten it up and then we'll pull the 10,000 steel gauge back out. I got these nice, these are nice. I got a whole set of these. I love, I'm loving it. Because like the one I had with Craftsman and they just were small and they weren't really for this. So I think we're going we're gonna to use them for something else. Maybe cut the handles off and use them for the drill or whatever. nice and tight because they were a little loose and that's common they're only into plastic so that's very common they were loose alright that's done and we're going to check the spark in a bit we could check the magneto if you want to check it alright we'll do that right now you want to see what it looks like let's see hold on let's get the ohm meter out before we go any further because the other one has a magneto that I can use so we can take that off. So we're putting it to ohms. All right. So if you want, I'll pull you back a little bit. Set it to ohms. We're going to go into the primary. And this is probably a little wet, so let's blow it out. A little wet from water. Don't want water in that. Okay, let's see if we can get it in there. May not be able to. I may have to go. You know what we'll do? We'll go clamp it to ground, and we'll have to go in there because it's a very deep boot. So that's a, you can go either way. It's just I keep the clamp on one end for these reasons. All right, let's see what we got. 2.2 K. Can you see that? That's nice. 
it's K and it's stable too. When it's all over the place, it's no good. So that should spark, but we'll check it as soon as we put the, the pull starter on. All right, let's do a smoke test. Prime it. It's like eight times. All right, it runs. Let me get the bail for it. Uh, my little Velcro thing. I have another carburetor. Dead cold, let's start it. Alright, so we're going to pull the choke. Pull the choke out. Okay, choke's on. Three pumps. Okay, choke in. And it idles right away. See, that's how it should be. All right, that's a good that's a good machine, and we'll be back for the next one. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Enjoy, and don't forget, like and subscribe, and leave a comment. And uh, this is a really great machine. This is how they should be: easy pump, easy pull, just idles right away, runs, no argument. Anything else is crap. See you.